Hey guys, it's Sarah and today is Booklist Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library. And every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or reading topic that we feel like talking about for the week that surrounds reading or books. And so for this week we are going to be doing a follow-up to a video that we did towards the beginning of the year, which was telling you some of our most anticipated releases for 2020. Uh, we are going to revisit that list see how many of those we have read and where we are on them and um, see how we did, basically. So this list was, you know, done at the very beginning of the year. We didn't know all the books that were coming out for the year yet. So that's something I've been struggling with a little bit in, you know, doing anticipated reads for the entire year in the very, very beginning of the year because things are changing constantly still. And, um, we don't even know what's coming out sometimes in the fall or in the winter of next year. So that's why I started doing these seasonally. I already have my first one posted, which is my winter most anticipated releases. So I'll leave that link down below if you haven't looked at it yet. But for 2020, we did start at the beginning. So um, this was kind of a short list because this, these were the books that we knew were coming out, you know, and I knew that I was anticipating. So, so I had 10 total. Um, all right, so the first one was Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough. Um, I did not read that one yet. <laughs> I do have it on my Kindle. I have it from NetGalley, um, but that is one that I just haven't, didn't pick it up. Um, didn't hear too much about it either. I saw a couple people read it and they didn't love it, um, but Sarah Pinborough can be a little bit polarizing as well, so uh, I just haven't read it yet. Still want to. The next one was The Darkest Corners of the Night by Meg Gardner, which was book number three in her Unsub series. And I did read that one and I gave it four stars. I really, really liked it. I read it actually kind of more recently <laughs> in the past couple of months I did read it. Um, but yeah, I did like it. The next one was Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass, which is the first book in the House of Earth and Blood. Nope. I don't know how to say this. And I like I need to find a confirmation thing about how this is. I think it's House of Earth and Blood is the title and it's the Crescent City series. I think that's it. I just, I need to look it up more because <laughs> like no one knows how to say that correctly. So House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, first book in a Crescent City series. We're going to go with that. Uh, I have not read that yet. And the reason I haven't read it is because I want to finish Thorn of Glass first so badly. And I have one more book left still. I still have not read Kingdom of Ash. I don't know if I'm going to get to it in December. Lindsay and I have plans to buddy read it, but I don't know if it's going to be able to happen based on what we both still need to read before the end of the year. So it may not happen right now, but I want to finish that first before I jump into Crescent City. So that's why I haven't read that one yet. Sitting on my shelves though. Okay, the next one was You Are Not Alone by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Buchanan. And I did read this one and I did give it four stars. I really did like it. Um, it was definitely a book that kept me guessing the whole time. And um, I really like this writing duo. I really do. Um, I still think their first book, The Wife Between Us, was my favorite of the three that they've written. But this one was probably my second favorite. So it was good. This one was The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren, and I did read that one as well. I gave this one four stars. Um, it was a five-star prediction, though, and it just ended up not quite being a five-star for me. There were just a few things about it that I just, I had enough problems, or not enough problems, but I, I didn't enjoy it to the point where it was five stars for me. So, but I did read it. Next one was The Dilemma by B.A. Paris, and I did read this one as well, and I did give this one four stars. And I think the reason was I went into it kind of expecting it to be more of a thriller because that's what B.A. Paris has written in the past, but this one was definitely more of a family drama, and you really need to go into it expecting that. <laughs> Otherwise, you are going to be disappointed. I still gave it four stars. I still really enjoyed it. It kept me interested the entire time. I was never bored. I wanted to know what was going to happen and how things were going to, you know, tie up and everything. Um... But yeah, so it was good though. The next one was The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. And I did read this one and I loved it. Loved it. That's all I'm going to say. It was five stars. Loved it. The next one was Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I did read this one. Loved it. <laughs> Another echo. Love, love, loved it. It was fantastic. I could not put that book down. I had no idea what was going on. I got to a point where I could not read it at night. Um, 
because things were freaking me out a little bit. And funnily enough, those two, um, the Sundown Motel and Riley Sager are both, they have kind of paranormal aspects to them. So both of them were creepy, 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 but both fantastic. Next one was Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. Mm, no, I haven't read that one yet, which is funny because that was my most anticipated of the entire year. And I pre-ordered it. I've had it pre-ordered for a year and a half. And um, it came and it's sitting here. It looks really pretty as it stares at me condescendingly. Uh, I haven't picked it up yet. Mm, yeah. And the last one, number 10, was was Empire the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. However, that release date got pushed back to 2021. It's coming out September 15th, I believe. Um, I've already pre-ordered it because if you pre-order in the US, they are all going to be signed editions. So I pre-ordered real quick when I saw him announce that on Instagram. Um, yeah, so I have it pre-ordered now. It's officially like there's an Amazon link. The cover has not been revealed yet, but you can pre-order it now. And I, I did that so fast when I saw him announce that they were all going to be, um, all the U.S. editions, at least, of the pre-orders are going to be signed. So I went ahead and jumped on that one. Uh, so that's coming out next year. So now that's on my most anticipated of next year. Okay, guys. Uh, so that's how I did. I read most of them, though. I read six out of ten. And then one of them didn't even come out, so I didn't have a choice in that one. So six of nine. I can say, because all the other ones did come out. Um, so that's pretty good, I think. I think that's pretty good. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so let me know down below. Um, did you guys read your most anticipated books that you had coming out this year? Um, do you read your most anticipated books really quickly? Let me know that too. Or do you tend to wait? Sometimes I'll wait and see what other people think, depending on what it is. <laughs> but um, I want to be better next year about picking up my most anticipated books. Um, that's something I want to work on as well. So make sure you go head over to Lindsay and see her follow up on what she was anticipated for the year. See if she's reading any of them. I'm really excited to see that as well. And hope you guys have a great day. We will see you again soon. Bye.